cultural do's and don'ts. Whistling at night, they believe that that invites the, the ghosts or the demons, so that was interesting to me. So you don't usually whistle at night. You don't click with your tongue, because that's, that's kind of a bad thing. Kind of almost like a mating call <laughs> is what it is. But yeah, you don't click with your tongue. Always take your shoes off when you go into somebody's house. It's kind of it's disrespectful when you don't. So it's, it's good to take your shoes off. Ask where to sit when you go into a house. If you sit where they put their head on their jackie, which is the woven mat that they sleep on. They sleep on the woven mat made from uh, the fronds of their trees. If you sit in the wrong place or where they put their head, that, that's offensive. So probably a good thing to ask where to sit and they'll tell you. You never step over anybody's legs. If they're sitting with their legs out or or anything like that, do not step over their legs. That's very offensive to them. Walk around them and and you say, oh, Jalakbur. That means like, oh, throw away my mistake or sorry is uh, what it would mean to us in English. They love to joke around and they love to tease. Teasing is a fun thing as well. One thing in the Marshall Islands that's another do is you never joke about uh, their moms. <laughs> It's another thing you just don't do. Yeah, just don't do it. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> another thing that you just, you don't do is when you go and knock on a door, uh, make sure to knock lightly. If you knock loud, that's very offensive and they'll be, they'll be like, who in the world is at my door? How rude is that? So you just knock lightly. A couple things that the Marshallese people love, absolutely love to do is play basketball and volleyball. They'll find anywhere to play basketball. They'll get a bucket and they'll nail it to a tree and that's their basketball hoop and they'll just play in a dirt a dirt patch. Even if it's as, as large as this room, they'll play three on three and the kids will just go crazy. And uh, volleyball as well. And there's always people outside playing. They usually play from 5.30 to till it gets dark. They just absolutely love that. The Marshallese people love to visit. Their culture is from the afternoon till 9, 9.30 at night, they walk around, they walk on the streets. It's kind of just like a party out on the streets until it gets dark. They just go visit, they go hang out, you know, they go play the uke with people and they sing on the streets. And it's just a visiting friendly culture. That, that was one thing I missed when I came home. It's just, everybody's always outside there, They're always outside walking around, talking, having fun getting in taxis, going down into the town, going into the countryside, down to Laura, or back to town, you know. Just traveling, visiting people, having fun. They have rice for almost every meal, uh, which is now my favorite thing. Their rice is a little bit different than the rice that I grew up with, and I think that I think most people grew up with here in the United States. Uh, their rice is, it's, I feel like it's softer and a little bit larger um, and I, I think it has better taste. They have a lot of spam, which is my new favorite thing. I still buy it at the store to this day. It's just, I love spam. Um, rice, spam, and ketchup. Ketchup with rice, it's, it's delicious. I absolutely love it. For big parties, they'll have what they call KMM, uh, KMMs. And those are birthday parties for one-year-olds. And that's a, that's a big culture party thing that they have there and they'll invite the elders over and it's it's a pretty big event and they'll have plates of food and they just go all out for it and they'll have multiple different kinds of meats they have a hot dog they'll have chicken that's sometimes half cooked but your stomach gets used to it and it's delicious <laughs> um, they have fish all kinds of fish um, I've had sea turtle which is delicious. It tastes a little bit like chicken, which is cliche, but it's true. And they have noodles and, and everything. So they love soda. They, they always have pop there. So I love their food, especially the rice and spam. And those are definitely my favorite, but that's what they eat. And like, like I said before, they have Marshallese pancakes, Namo Namo, and those are those are delicious, better than better than our pancakes. More flavor, more maybe probably more sugary. That's why, but they're delicious. In the Marshall Islands, uh, they get some pretty intense rainstorms, 
and you'd get caught in it pretty often. Um, I remember there was one night in my second area, my companion and I, it was getting close to nine o'clock, it was maybe eight, eight twenty, eight thirty, and it just started downpouring. We got caught and we didn't have umbrellas or anything. We were just running, hiding under houses, you know, under roofs and we were just soaked from head to toe. But my companion would always turn to me and say, Hey, the more it rains and the more you get caught in the rain, the cuter your wife will be. So hey, we didn't mind it, right? But yeah, so we just we just got caught in the rain and that happens so often. A lot of times it'll just pass over. It'll be like a, an hour long storm. But then also other times I remember where it would just rain the whole day um, and it would flood the streets. You know, you'd have to try and find the high ground to, to try and get past the water that was flooding in the streets. And usually there's not, there's no lightning there, which is something surprising to me. I didn't see much lightning for two years, but it does rain pretty intensely. So I had the opportunity to serve on an outer island called Jalowitz and Jalowitz it was the capital before Madro, before World War II. Um, it was the capital of the Marshall Islands, and it's where a lot of World War II battles had taken place. And so there's some cool historical things out there. People are still finding bullet shells and you know old grenades, stuff like that, or old Japanese bomb shelters that were there with bullet holes in them. Stuff like that are very interesting, and I had the opportunity to, to serve out there. And it's absolutely gorgeous. There's a high school out on Jalowitz. And that was one of my favorite areas to serve in was, was Jalowitz. Really enjoyed it. And you, what you do is you travel down that, that atoll to, the, to Jalowitz, Jalowitz, which is super outer island. You know, there's not many people down there. Just beautiful beaches, white sandy beaches. The water is as clear as you can picture it, you know, as, as you could even imagine. And that's how all the outer islands are. They're just, even Madro, it's, it's gorgeous. There's just beautiful beaches. There's incredible water. But that was one of my favorite was just the outer islands because it's so, so gorgeous. There's so historical World War II sites out there. And, and the people are just incredible out there as well. The transportation in the Marshall Islands, they use taxis. Most people don't a lot of them do have cars, but most people just use taxis. It's, I think, 75 cents a ride. And you just go to the road and you just call them over and they'll stop by and pick you up. And, and that's how everybody gets around is mostly is taxis. A lot of people work for the government there. Um, other people work in what they call munwias, which means they're like little shops on the, like little shack shops on the side of the road where you can go buy food, uh, toiletries, snacks, just anything you want in those little shops. People work there. They use the taxis, they work in the government or they have restaurants. They do have some restaurants there that they work in. Um, the Munwias, the little shops on the side of the road. They have gas stations that people work in. They've got the power plant. As far as uh, living conditions go or their lifestyle, most people, you know, they'll wake up in the morning and They'll have Marshallese pancakes. I forget the name, it's either Namo Namo or Namu Namu. I think it's Namo Namo. And they're delicious. They're better than American pancakes, I think. So they're my favorite. But they'll have that a lot of times in the morning. And then lunch and dinner, rice with some kind of meat, hot dogs, which are my favorite, usually uncooked, or chicken or fish that they've caught themselves, or tuna. A lot of times they'll have tuna, which is my favorite sashimi, which is just raw tuna. They chop it up and that's delicious. It's my favorite, but uh, that's that's a lot of times what they eat. They eat a lot of, the, of ramen as well. They don't usually have furniture. We sit on the ground. When we teach our lessons, you sit cross-legged or um, on the ground. Most people usually don't have furniture. So that was something for me to get used to, but I actually enjoyed it. Really came to love that that culture and those people and the way that they live and even what they eat. That became, it's now my favorite food. So they've got two shopping centers there. One's called Payless and that's in like the city. Well, they're both in the city side, but that's closer to a city called Rita. Or you can go to K&K, &K, uh, 
those are kind of the two competing markets there. Yeah, they're actually really pretty good stores, grocery stores, they're large. The Marshallese people, a lot of them do know English, um, especially the youth nowadays is they they teach it in high school. So most of them do know English, they just won't show it because they're very shy and they will get embarrassed. That's the right word is they'll be embarrassed speaking to a white elder uh, in English because they're like, they get shy and they're afraid they're going to make mistakes. But most people, if you speak to them in English, they'll understand for the most part if they're the younger generation. The older generation, they don't know it too well, but some of them do. And when I say older generation, I mean 50, 60 and above. But people 40, 40 and younger, they usually know it okay. Especially those who work in the government. They do pretty well with their, their knowledge of the English language. They have, they have slang terms that can translate over to kind of the same thing. One is, what's up? In Marshallese, they say, Eorda. That means, if you were to directly translate it across, it means, there is what? But it's just like saying, what's up? Eorda, Rainin. It's like, what's up today? You know, and they'll be like, oh, yeah, boy, Eorda. And so, that's that's kind of like the equal, uh, equal phrase, if I were to say it, of what's up. They'll take English words and they'll kind of make it into a Marshallese by just doing putting their uh, accent onto it. Um, let me think of an example. Uh, they say bite, like fight, but it actually means to punch. They kind of the word is fight, but they, it actually yeah means to punch. They'll say ah, I done bite mejum, which means I'm gonna punch your face, but it's saying I'm gonna fight your face. <laughs> So it's like a, it's like direct translation kind of a thing. Bite means to punch. This is probably my most embarrassing story out on the mission. Uh, we were teaching a man named Johnny in an island called Long Island, or not in a, in a it was like a, a village called Long Island. And my companion and I were teaching Johnny, and and he wasn't the most intelligent man you'd ever meet, but he was he was awesome. We loved him anyway. And he got an answer correct one time. And I remember I, there's two similar words in Marshallese. One is binawiya and binawiye. One means you're not smart, you're kind of stupid. And the other one means you're like a quick learner and you're intelligent. And, and we were super happy for him. We were proud of him because he, he answered a question correctly. And so I wanted to congratulate him. I would be like, oh, good job, Johnny. You, you got it right. But I ended up saying the other word. And I was like, Johnny, you're so slow to learn. You're you're kind of stupid. But I, I got the two words mixed up, binawiya and binawiye. And so right when I said that, I was like, oh, Johnny, kulugun binawiya. And he, he just kind of like looked at me. And I was like, binawiye, binawiye. <laughs> and I had to apologize to him because I told him he was stupid instead of a quick learner and intelligent. So I thought that was, that was pretty funny. One of my most, more embarrassing moments on the mission. But, you know, the people there, is, they're so easygoing, and they understand. They speak in the back of their throat, kind of, is how I feel. And sometimes, to me, this it kind of almost sounds like baby talk a little bit. Like, it almost sounds like they're, they're pronouncing it in the back of their throat. So, they'll, they'll come up to you if they were to approach you. They say, Oh, yagwe is And, Oh, yagwe is it meor? Um, you know, it, they kind of, they speak very quick. It's a very quick language and it's in the back of their throat and they'll slur their words. So to us, when we first hear it, it sounds like they're just mumbling. But then after you start to learn the language, it takes, it can take a while. It took me a while to, to understand words. But the mumbling, you start to be able to break it up into words. But they speak very quick. <laughs> it's a quick language.